This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Thomas, the CEO of AIS Resources, is with us today for a special feature on the company's Kingston Gold Project in the Golden Triangle of Australia, located in Victoria. Now, this project is a 167 square kilometre exploration licence with drill results of 3.6 metres at 16 grams per tonne and 2.5 metres at 24 grams per tonne and has had a significant amount of exploration data from previous explorers, which you say, Phil, is a rare find. So I'll hand it over is. to you. Yeah, it's a rare find. Go on, I'll hand over to you yeah. to, to take us through it. Okay, thanks very much, Mark. Yeah, it, it's um, uh, very difficult to uh, find areas um, that have uh, promising gold results and are available and uh, aren't being combed over. And uh, I guess Victoria... Uh, in the last three years has had many international and domestic companies um, scrutinising everything that moves, basically. So uh, we were very fortunate um, through our contacts to, to be able to take on this project. It's a little bit different. Um, and uh, if we have a look at this page here, you'll see there that um, the, there's basically a square shape. And in the middle here is where the famous Kingston mine um, that produced um, several thousand ounces of gold was um, was found, um, and there's Moray Moral, which is uh, the start of what this national park in here is called. Um, and so it, it's been explored by the big guys, which is the bit that attracted me. Western Mining's done a lot of work there. Um, BHP's done a lot of work there. And as soon as you know that when those guys are, are on there, that they, they they smelt something. They they got a a, a whiff of something that was there. And there's um, a very big alluvial uh, gold mine, um, obviously uh, finished now, sitting in just in this area here, and um, and then within this area here is what we call a prospecting license. And a prospecting license allows a uh, it's normally eight years duration, and it allows you to mine um, in in that area. Now the areas are very small, 150 meters by 350 meters. So you've, you've got to be pretty sure of where you're going. But in fact, what, what happened was that we negotiated for the um, vendor to keep the um, prospecting license in there. But if they go outside of their prospecting license, we earn 15% of the gold that they um, produce. So we've kind of got a 15% royalty overbuilt. Um, they've spent a year getting all the permits and, and uh, bits and pieces in place. And I understand, I was talking to the owner yesterday, and I understand that they're almost there. So it's going to be quite exciting for us um, because we'll be able to go down their shaft, have a look around and um, and look at some of the, the, the formations, um, predominantly the quartz and, uh, and the contacts and how the mineralised um, zones have been, um, been populated with gold. Okay. We also have another area. So this is quite strange tenement we have have two, two tenements, one in the north, which I just showed you, and one in the south. And this one sits along the township of uh, Best, um, which is, uh, sorry, of Great Western, which is just in here. Um, and then you've got Armstrong down there. Um, and the famous Ararat just below us, where there's uh, lots of lots of gold mines um, and gold occurrences. And you can see everyone's staked around us. There's there's hardly any ground available. The ground that's not, not staked out is uh, government conservation land. That's the only reprieve that they have. But um, the 7370 area has been quite extensively explored. So this is a pretty interesting area as well, and I'll, I'll go um, into that as well. But um, we've got excellent infrastructure with uh, the highway and the power lines very, very close. If we have a look at um, the prospecting license, which is this little square in here. Mm -hmm. um, you can see here that um, uh, Platt Search was the guys that were there before Range Resources. They were in there around about um, 1995 to about 2002, and they did a lot of excellent work, really good. So what they did was they did the soil surveys, 
And um, I was just talking to another um, geologist this afternoon, and he was saying, look, if you can get uh, gold PPB greater than um, uh, 20 ppm, a uh, PPB, you, you got a fantastic indicator. Well, if you have a look here, nearly um, all of these areas in here, in here, in here, in here, mm. right through this corridor here um, is, uh, and, and going to the north, north, um, west up here, um, is greater than 10, greater than 20. So um, I was quite encouraged about that. And the, the mine shaft they're going to put down is uh, just in here. So they'll be, they'll be pushing up that way with the mine shaft. So we looked at this and thought, look, there's actually a distinctive north-south trend rather than an a east-west trend. Mm -hmm. And you can see the drilling corridor is, is east-west, and you can see here there's some alluvial mines and uh, here's a contour around here. So um, we, we basically thought, well, maybe they made a mistake. They, they misinterpreted it. Um, and based on the soil evidence, it seems to be north-south, um, north, north, east-northeast mineralised corridor. So we did a little bit more work and um, looked at the results from Western Mining Corporation, who, who didn't do north-south, they did east-west. And you can see there that um, if, if you look roughly north-south, you can see um, the higher gold anomalies here in, in, in the gold colour mm -hmm. going north-south. There's north to south north to south, uh, lend over more north to south. So we thought, ha, 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 let's have a look at the gravity anomaly. So behind all these stars is some pictures. And you can see here that the contact, so this is showing, uh, it's a gravity survey showing differences in uh, rock density. And normally that's what we look for when we're looking for, for gold, um, looking for the contacts. And lo and behold, right along this road here, there is a change from yellow to, to blue. Mm -hmm. And we've got another one here. We've got another one here. And right on the contact, all of a sudden, we get a little bit of an increase in, in PPB of gold. And over here, we get an increase in PPB. Over here, we get a huge increase right on, on this point here. So you can see there's consistency in the soils with the structural geology. And so, so we've image, been working. The image behind the, the, the colours, that, that, is that showing, uh, is it contours underneath the, the surface? Is that right? or? Uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they've they've just blocked out blocked out um, areas. So this area might have a um, a, a value, and then um, you go up, and and then this area here that's darker red has got a higher value, and then the blue has got a very low value. So we, we're just looking at graduations of the of the values, um, and I think the white has got the highest value. Okay. So we're looking at uh, at, at that uh, at that contrast. So if we go on uh, and, and have a look and um, see where the drill holes were and uh, once again look at it, you can see where all the activity has been in the prospect licence, but outside the prospect licence, um, there's also been significant number of holes. And I think here they kind of clicked onto the trend here, but they, they're off the, the high gold anomaly area. Uh, they were really in the, in the moderate and the weak uh, area. So it's our intention to basically use this data um, to go north south, and uh, and that's that's going to be our soil sampling, which will be um, starting in about two weeks, and then from there we'll, we'll do a, a what they call an IP survey, which is induced polarity, mm -hmm. and we'll look and see if there's any sulfides creating a signal for us, and then we'll drill those sulfides. But having said that, um, over in this area here, there's probably um, 25 or 30 shafts that have been put down. Now we have to be a little bit careful um, uh, to make sure that we're we're on trend. Um, but I suspect that um, we'll probably get some decent hits down some of those gold shafts because the history shows us that they they got some pretty good grades as you read out um, in your introduction. Mm -hmm. So if we we go down here and look at the trend of mineralisation, we can see there that we've got this north-south um, trending in the soils. We've had kind of east-west um, trending in the drill patterns. And um, this, this model here um, of the Kingston mine mineralization uh, gives us a good sense of, of where to go. And we can see we have all the results of these drill holes here following these, these trends up here. 
this is the area that they should have been drilling in, not down here. So that's that's the that's the interpretation that we have, and that's where our focus will be, and also down here in the south. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you remember those those pictures, I'll just go back to refresh your memory. So we'll be down here on this contact, on this contact, and up in this area here. Okay. And over here. So um, if if we go back down to um, to the next bit, um, it's gone a little bit too far. Um, and here we can see, um, unfortunately, I couldn't get a better quality slide, but um, you can see our square mm-hmm. uh, lease around here. You can see the um, these round circles here, and they're the areas of interest that we've got. Um, so, in fact, if we go to the next slide, um, they're our targets. So uh, they're going to be on strike, um, which means along the fault lines um, and north northeast, and that's targets one, two, and three. And you can see roughly that big yellow body um, creeping through here. Um, and this is a structural map of the of the faulting. Um, and it'll follow the soil envelope. And once again, we'll be doing some extra work in the soil envelope in the soils here to create that envelope. Um, and then um, uh, we've got the Landsborough Fault and the Coogee Fault um, uh, sort of guiding. So there's the Landsborough Fault through here. And obviously, we're going to go right on the fault and look for intersections there and soil sampling around there that looks interesting. And um, it's interesting that the magnetite has been destroyed by the solutions that have been depositing the gold. So the magnetic destruction helps us identify zones of where the mineralization has been. So we'll be using that as a um, mag survey um, if we need to, and that's a magnetic um, survey. And um, some of the areas we're going to ignore because, uh, which is these areas down here, around here, because they're uh, this area we may come back to, but um, basically these areas here haven't produced anything with soils, um, and they're quite a distance away uh, from the from the faulting system. So all the action is over here. Mm-hmm. So if we, we look um, at uh, the targets again, relative to all the, where the drilling and sampling has been done, you can see how it relates. So here's our north-south trend, north-south trend over here, north-northeast trend over here. These culturally sensitive areas are really um, just roads mm-hmm. that um, and, and creeks that we have to stay within 100 metres of. Um, and I think this one actually isn't even... Um, a grade two or grade three. I think it's just a dry creek here, but uh, we we um, we we put on the sensitive zones anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Once again, um, over here it gives you a, another sense of uh, uh, oh, it's a crown, crown zone land on the bottom there. That's right. Um, so if we go and have a look at uh, at, at the map, um, we've uh, we've put in here and we've spoken to the farmer here, so. Uh, you can see my handwriting there. <laughs> so, um, uh, and that yellow line, as you can see, just outside is our okay. is our um, area. Um, there's there's a lot of um, canola grain over here, so we probably don't want to be going over there too much. Um, and the waterfront river frontage is down here. Uh, the town of Navarre is down here. There's the race course, um, so we want to stay away from the town a bit. So, um, yeah, that's really where the main action is. That's a that's a borehole that was done uh, looking for water by a local farmer, and we've got the log of that. And um, there were some holes done out outside of the Kingston mine here, and uh, our geologist was up looking at that today. Um, and um, here's a list of some of the people that uh, have been around us in the past, Bendigo Mining in 2000, um, and and so and Western Mining in the 80s um, on on that area. Okay. Um, here's, uh, I guess, for the um, pseudo geologists, um, the the, f- the built-in fault lines, different types of rocks, um, an interesting hornfels turbidite over here, which is um, not very common, um, and then you've got granites over here, um, and then we've got some, um, you know, more more um, uh, Devonian and the the ages are the important thing here um, to get the age of the mineralization that's happening and these um, broad um, 
synclinal hinges and you get saddle reefs and all sorts of things happening. Okay. And what are turbidites? Um, turbidites is like a shale which is formed in very deep water and uh, as the sea level rises and falls, um, they, they tend to uh, fill in and then uh, get eroded out and, um, and then obviously they get uplifted and uh, stretched and turned around and uh, they're ideal um, in, in Victorian geology that they tend to accept most of the gold mineralization when it comes up from the mantle. So uh, if you can find Ordovician, uh, which is the right age for the mineralization, then um, you, you're on a winner. Um, same thing with the granites. We're looking for Devonian granites. Um, so, um, but uh, essentially they're just especially shales. Okay. Normally very white in colour, which is unusual. So um, you can spot them a mile away. Okay. Uh, 14, uh, you can see the, the Konji, the Gunji fault I was talking about before. There's a there's an outline of the block that we've got. Um, uh, here's here's a, a bunch of um, of area that we've explored or already. Uh, we haven't explored this area in these other blocks here. Um, and here's a projection from um, the hard rock workings um, going through, um, you know, the granites and so forth going through, which is kind of just looking at, at this, uh, this map here, but in, in context. And you can see down here all the gold mines <laughs> around the place. Hmm. Um, they're substantial. Um, but they're places, so um, they've been um, sent from north to south um, along rivers and so forth, and, and they've just got involved in it um, in a big way. And the primary deposits are, are in um, in the Red Stars. So there's the town of Great Western right there, right beside us. So we probably wouldn't be doing much in this this top area here. It's mostly going to be down this area in here. Okay. And these are the gold mines, then. Are they, are they full-on gold mines, or are they more like shafts? Look, the, the ones with the red, red diamonds are. Um, they're, they're significant uh, gold mines, okay. um, uh, and this area here uh, was quite prolific um, in, in the 80s and 90s, 1880 to 1890, and then again in the 1920s, there were a lot of mines there. Um, in fact, we found uh, a couple of mines up here, which um, uh, when we followed our research, there was nothing in the, in the mining surveyors' reports, and we think they just got paid to, to uh, dig holes mm. um, to employed so you've got to be careful in some areas um, and then down here we've got um, basically uh, another line through of the of the culturally sensitive areas and you can see down here there's nothing um, of too much concern and there's this beautiful fault going through here mm. and another one clipping the corner typically the gold's about two kilometers from the from the um, uh, from the fault on the hanging wall um, which is the lower part of the fault so um, you can you can pretty much um, have a look around here with your geophysics, and you, you typically get something. So, in a nutshell, that's that's the the program. Um, that's our targets and um, uh, soil sampling. Rob Rob will be out there in two weeks' time with his gun and uh, his bags, and um, following the lines that Dennis um, Walsh, our chief geologist, has set for him. Excellent. I mean, yeah, when we said at the start that there was a lot of historical data, it's clear to see there is an awful lot of historical data there. Is it as easy then to miss a deposit by thinking it is east-west rather than north-south? Can it be that simple? Um, look, it, you know, it's, it's, everything's open to debate, but, but um, what we have done is looked at the past research and geology and interpretation and just challenged it and said, well, what results have you got to prove that it's east-west? And there's been none. I mean, the, the, there's been um, significant um, significant finds in this area here, but not, not out mm. in, in this area here and this area here. So we've stayed away from this area here and gone north because we think, and looking at this structural geology, you can follow this high point there, and then there's this massive thing, but... You can't see any lines going east west. Um, all the lines are going north south. All the lineal bodies are north south, um, and we're not quite sure why they thought it was east west. We think they were heavily influenced by the alluvial gold and the Kingston mine and the northern Kingston mine because that went east west. 
Okay. Um, and so we just, you know, that's the way um, uh, Fosterville was um, was expanded from, um, you know, 1 million tonnes to 5 million tonnes of gold, grading 31 and a half. They changed their hypothesis and the Swan and Eagle mines were found down at, you know, 800 metres and 600 metres. So um, it's quite common for uh, deposits to have a new life when new thinking mm. comes in on board. And um, in in this area, you have basalts as well. We have old basalts and new basalts, but the basalt coverage with the uh, shales underneath it creates a massive gold um, uh, area. And uh, I think Northern Stall Mining has um, has proved the, the basalt theory. They're further down to the south um, from where we are. Um, they're, nor- they're in Stall, whereas we're just up closer to the Lockington and um, mm. the other areas there. But um, Northern Stall, I have land um, uh, pegged right beside us all the way up. Mm. Mm-hmm. I remember what so, you said last time about um, you don't necessarily have a catalyst moment. I mean, I know you can get a significant result, for example, but it's more like you you build all the time. And what's the, is it a common understanding that it takes two, three, four explorers on a particular area to actually um, potentially prove it up and find something. It's just that fresh eyes and that past data um, that, that just builds and builds. Exactly, yeah. And, and I mean, you know, you, you've got to be really, really lucky to hmm. belt down seven drill holes and, and hit something with a huge intercept. Normally, um, there's been a lot of background work done to get to that point. But what we're doing is we're we're um, reducing the amount of um, of background noise, if you like, and just continue to focus and focus and focus, and then you hit something. And typically, I mean, Dr. Dansan and some of his work, he just said, look, you know, if you can get um, high grade high grade um, uh, soils, um, you're probably only two or three hundred meters away from the from the gold spur mineralization, but. Yeah. Yeah, that two or three hundred meters is the is the sixty four dollar question. Do you go north, south, or east, west? Mm-hmm. Um, so you've you've got to build your soil profiles up. And um, at our fossil project, we we today just got um, seven hundred and eighty samples back that have had ICP done through them, which is um, looking at lead and arsenic and uh, zinc and tin, looking at the interplay between them and. The results, are, if you just look at them with with your eyes, they, 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 there's no real pattern there. But when you start correlating the the values, all of a sudden pattern starts um, coming out, and um, so that work will continue for uh, for the next couple of weeks. Okay, okay, good. So these targets here we're looking at these are soil sample targets, are they? Uh, initially, soil samples, but yep. then they'll turn into drilling. Um, okay. We, we want to go. There's no soils higher than one. And further south than three, and um, between this fault here, there's virtually no soils in here, and there's no soils in here. Okay. So we're basically going to jump in there and and do that. Okay, okay, that's interesting, and that's happening in two weeks, as long with IP survey as well. Yes, assuming we're not, we just got locked down uh, for mm. COVID for for five days, so no one's going anywhere at the moment. But um, yeah, so that's probably delayed us a week. So. Um, mm. Yeah, about three weeks we'll be out there. And IP surveys where someone walks up and down with a with a, a line and it sends a current into the ground, is that right? That's correct, yeah, and that, that current um, measures two things. It measures the conductivity, which we refer to as chargeability, and it also measures uh, the resistivity of the rock. So by combining the two, we can look at high resistivity and high chargeability. The chargeability is a function normally of the sulfides and the and the resistivity is a function of the silicates um, that are there, and depending on the rock types we we have, we can we can figure out um, basically where they are. And then we use a another um, bit of technology which is similar called a gradient array, and that gradient array gives us a a, a deeper vertical section, um, better uh, resolution for the vertical uh, rather than the plan. Um, so. Um, so we'll be we'll be running that technology um, as soon as we finished our soils. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. And what did you say at the start, Phil? About do, do you wholly own this, or was there another partner here that you were talking about having a royalty? Yeah. No. We we, we own we own one hundred percent of it, and we paid about five hundred and twenty five thousand for that deposit. Um, but in this little area here is where the prospectors' license is. That we get the 50, 15% royalty 
if they mine outside of their license into into our exploration license. Oh, I see. Okay, so there's some prospectors in the area in in the right in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They've they, they've got a 150 by 350 meter area. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, well, we've now covered. Yeah, put I think all the gold projects, haven't we, in in, in AIS's portfolio? Um, yes, we have. Yeah, and they all seem. Well, to it to be have a lot of data. This one particularly has a lot of data, and they all are, seem to be at a very interesting stage of of, of you know next stage exploration and getting and, and underselling the, the geology a bit more. Is that? I mean, are you equally pleased with all of them? Um, I mean, they all to me look look pretty good um, from my naive geologic point of view. But how do you feel about all the licenses that you've got? Are you very pleased to have picked them up? Do you think you've got, you know, could have something really, really significant? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I picked them without having, a, you know, just having the, the research data, not having the actual data on it. And, um, uh, you know, Yelgogran, our first drill hole was sensational with 80 metres. Um, the hole three and four were, were great uh, in terms of showing us um, some structural geology um, and we diamond drilled the whole lot. So we've got fantastic results there. Um, the ICP work that we're doing there is coming up really well, showing us the pathfinders. Um, and we're, we're just going back. In fact, we were working on it yesterday to work out what our next drill hole campaign and uh, geophysics campaign is going to be to complement what we've got at the moment. Um, we're building a very complex structural model of the mineralization zone. So once that's completed, that will give us a, um, some pretty pictures and some pretty good uh, uh, information on where, where we want to be. Tulin is is great. You know, we, we're getting above 20 PPB gold in, in um, three lines. Um, the ICP data is coming through um, on first glance today. There was some, some interesting patterns, but once again, it's going to take us two or three weeks to get our heads around what's actually going on for the next drill campaign there. We know it's across the road, but we're not quite sure precisely where we should be drilling until we do it. It'll then have a third campaign at Fosterville of diamond drilling, and that will be the real test. And we'll be looking for quartz reefs um, with that diamond drilling. But at the moment, we're just doing RC because it's faster to get the assays done. Uh, it gives us more information uh, quickly we can use the XRF gun on the results, and then we can send those uh, crushed samples um, off to the lab for for more um, more uh, detailed assay. And then Kingston, which um, clearly has had a lot of work done, a lot of holes put into it, a lot of core. We've got some core available, so it's highly prospective. It's got, and it's highly prospective because there's lots of shafts around. Um, there's a model that we've put together combining all the data we have and uh and we've got a couple of major faults both inferred and um and real um on the property so um you know th that eight and four seven um and one and two are going to be pretty exciting um from a soil and uh, and drilling perspective when we get there okay okay good well thank you very much for, for covering off the day kingston and i hope the lockdown in australia doesn't go on too much longer. Everyone's getting rather fed up with all these lockdowns, I think. Is it fair to say, COVID um, depending, that the rest of this year will be quite active with AIS? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we've had a pretty wet start to winter, but um, that'll be finished in, in two or three months, um, which will coincide with all our modelling and uh, data analysis. Um, the lambing season will be over. Uh, the ski season will be over. So um, we'll have a fresh start. Um, to get out uh, and uh, get our boots dirty and uh, and get with the drillers and um, and start making headway. Okay, fantastic. Well, I hope you're able to keep investors and shareholders updated, uh, Phil, with with uh, with what's going on with news flow and also pictures are always nice from site as well to see the activity activities that are going on. But um, thank you very much, Phil Thomas, the CEO of AAS Resources, for that presentation on the Kingston Gold Project in Victoria. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for listening to this Stockbox interview. For more information, interviews and videos, visit our website at stockboxmedia.com or give us a follow on Twitter by searching at Stockbox Media.